Hi, we're going to do some questions and answers. I'm a wife and mother to a one-year-old boy. I work part-time for a Jewish outreach shul, a branch of Aish, in the United States. Baruch Hashem, I'm able to work from home. I'm only supposed to work four hours a day, but the position I have constantly puts me in a place of being able to help people and do chesed. Setting up another person for Yom Tov meal last minute, helping a divorced mother find someone to put schach on her sukkah that just blew down, brainstorming um, ways for someone to get the word out about a widower's new home business, etc. These requests come to me on top of my daily shul duties of assisting the Rav and running the shul many activities classes, which alone require more than four hours a day. On one hand, my children and husband suffer when I work more than my allotted time. I get distra uh, distracted, stressed out. I don't have time to make meals. The house is a mess. I'm not there for them mentally, emotionally. But on the other hand, how could I refuse helping people in situations that fall in my lap? Playing with my son on the floor when someone doesn't have a place to eat on Friday night or no one to help a divorced woman put her schach back on makes me feel like a terrible fellow Jew. When I don't give my son or husband or house the attention they need, I feel like a terrible wife mother. I end up staying up really late working and bal the balancing act is taking a toll. If I let the chesed opportunities keep streaming in, there'd literally be no end. If I mention the dilemma to the Rav I work for, he says I should stop working after four hours. How do I reconcile that I'm so often put in situations where I could do so much good at the expense of myself and my family? How do I know where to stop or how? When to stop or how? How could I refuse even a single act of chesed when I read about Chaya Sarah Kramer? On the other side of the hand, I don't want to develop myself a coldness or insensitivity to the needs of others by saying, no, I can't help you. Okay, thank you for help with this. I'm really struggling. Well, Yasher Koach, so far. It sounds like so far you're doing really well. So um, your values are good. And uh, and I'm going to devote the answer mostly to practical things. So on a practical level, people are turning to you because you are the one who they could turn to. This is fine. This is as it should be. Okay. However, since your child needs energy and your husband needs energy and you need you need sleep and you need food and you need the basics, what I would suggest is to have two hours a day that you don't answer the phone at all. These two hours should be the hour when your husband is expected home and one hour during the day that you devote exclusively to your baby. Okay, so it's not that much time. There are 22 other hours. But if you're firm with these two hours and you really, 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 now this will take self-discipline from you, are on during those two hours, meaning when your husband comes home, you're dressed, you look good, okay, you could make simple food. Food doesn't have to be that great. It has to be nutritious, it has to taste good, it doesn't have to be elaborate, okay, but if you're in a good mood and you look good and you're interested in him and nothing distracts you from him for a full hour, that's, that's a lot. If you could give total focus time to your baby, meaning that you're, let's say, nursing him not while reading a book or talking on the phone, but just eye contact, etc., this will change things. If you need more time to sleep, okay, then you may have to add on another amount of time with the babysitter, if you could afford it, to nap, if not every day, every other day. But what I would suggest is to have less time by making more time. In other words, if these are your sacred times for your husband and for your baby, then you don't have to worry so much about the other times. Now with that, I'm going to go through your letter more specifically. A lot of this, so again, the divorced woman, the widower, um, the person who needs Shabbos placement, they have 22 hours a day to reach you. You could be okay with saying with not being available 24 hours. Okay. Um, people in the real world don't work hours. It's a myth. 
Okay, anybody who has a phone is in contact with other people, not during work hours. It's okay to talk on the phone and to work things out while you're holding your baby on your hip, while you're making a, an unelegant supper. It's fine. That's real life. Um, in an earlier time, these people would be literally knocking at your door, which would, if anything, be much harder. A telephone is a chesed. Okay, um, it may help, and this often does work in Kirov communities, if you could ask somebody, if you have, like, I've seen this in Tov, I should say which city, but I've seen this in one city where there's a congregant, a woman whose children are no longer living at home, they're grown, and she does have a job, but it's not a job that's, that's that absorbing emotional 